Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Today we're going to be continuing the series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project. More specifically, this instance is actually the DE25 Nano from Jurassic. Because as of about a day ago, Jurassic announced the DE25 Nano, which is the cut down version of the DE25 standard board we talked about maybe six, eight months ago, is a potential Mr. 2 successor. So we're here to talk about the specs, what this board could offer, and whether or not it might actually end up being a Mr. 2 one day. Before getting too far involved, though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to spread the channel you got a patreon link down below as well and the reason i'm using donkey kong 64 footage here is because it's one of the games one of the very few that actually has an issue on mr fpj down to memory latency that could be fixed by a potential Jurassic de25 nano and like i said before we talked about the de25 standard and i said while that was a promising board it was way too big and had way too much going on when it actually came to the usability there's a reason why the de10 nano not the standard is the de facto board of choice for Mr. FPJ. It has everything you need, nothing more and nothing less, and it also comes in at a price point that can make it a consumer product because the standard is more a four-digit part, not a three-digit part. And obviously with Taki Udon and Retro Remix, Mr. Pi, I'm sure if Jurassic DE25 Nano does get selected as a potential Mr. 2, then that means I'm sure other people out there could make boards that are basically adhering to about the same spec because it is kind of an open standard, or at least as close as you can possibly get. Now this is the DE25 Nano, and of course it's going to look very familiar because it's basically the exact same footprint as the boards we're using for Mr. FPGA today. You have the two sets of GPIO, you have that FPJ SOC on board that also actually has ARM processor cores on it as well, and basically if you just kind of squinted you wouldn't even realize this wasn't just a DE10 or one of the Mr. Pi clone boards. It's going to have the HDMI out as well but we'll get into just what that can and can't do in a moment because it isn't going to be as exciting as everyone could possibly hope for on the resolution front but pretty much looks like a Jurassic DE10 Nano except it is the DE25 and there are still a few cores that have ever so slight problems down to the DE10 kind of being filled up to capacity both on the logic as well as the bandwidth. Sure burning Rangers works perfectly fine with his other Saturn games, some of the 3D fighting games in fact, that can dip a few frames if using single RAM not dual RAM. Could that be solved by a DE25 Nano? Potentially yes, but of course, like anything until developers get these things in their hands if it even is a Mr. 2 platform, we really can't know anything for certain. So just be aware that there's been presumptions being made in the video, more like educated guesses based upon the stats we're actually looking at. But there are a few things of Mr. that could be fixed in a potential successor board. So you'll see here there is going to be 138,000 logic elements on board this chip. And it's going to be an Agilex part, not a Cyclone part, and this is going to be the new family of FPGA processors from Intel and Altera, so definitely a more modern part. Kind of think of it like CPU generations. Yes, they all kind of do the same thing, but the more modern ones are definitely going to do a more efficient and better job at the same basic processes. If you take a look at the FPGA side of things, you're sitting on one gigabyte of LPDDR4 memory with a 32-bit wide data bus, so it's going to have a faster RAM speed. Now, I want something to be very clear. 138,000 logic elements is not going to get you stuff like Nintendo GameCube. Honestly, those systems are probably 5-10 years away at best in FPGA, and with the way they actually draw graphics dealing with frame buffers and how the systems are laid up, really FPGA isn't going to bring anything to the party that real hardware wouldn't or even software emulation couldn't do better. It's kind of a misnomer that somehow FPJ makes everything better. It can make it better versus actual software emulation in instances on older systems, but don't think this means GameCube. Don't think this means PlayStation 2 or Xbox. That's just not where we're at right now. If this thing is even selected as a Mr. 2 board, we don't even know that much. But you'll see here on the HDMI output, you're only getting a 1080p resolution because it's using basically the same silicon to output that image that we have on Mr. Now. So those RetroTrink 4Ks, those pixels, Pixel effects more 4Ks. If you want to do direct video mode and you want to scale to 4K, you're either still going to have to let your television do it or you have to have an external scaler if this thing does become an FPJ gaming device. So you're not getting to 4K. Take that out of the mix right now. And you'll see here on the HPS or hard processor side, 
basic other statistics, another set of one gigabyte LP DDR4 memory, because again, these things do actually have those cores inside of them that are processor cores. So maybe in some world you could have a hybrid system where some things are running at FPJ and others are running on the ARM cores. Now, I'm not sure if that's what anybody wants. Honestly, me personally, if you're going to be using CPU cores to try to run systems, you may as well run your PC and have your processor do it, because trust me, it's going to be more efficient than any of these cores on an actual DE25 Nano, but it is technically a potential. Now, if we go over the block diagram here, this is where it gets a little bit nerdy, but where I really enjoy having some fun. You'll see it's an SOC, and the HPS or hard processor side of things, and the FPJ side of things are going to be color-coded, so you can kind of follow along and see exactly what is where and how it is going to function. And if we take a look at a board diagram here marked off from Altera as well, you're going to see whether it's green or whether it's orange, what side of the things it's coming from. So you're going to see you have one gigabyte of RAM on the FPJ side of things. You have one gigabyte of RAM on the ARM core side of things. And you're going to have a bunch of other ports and everything else, including that MIPI connector, which is actually going to have direct lanes to the FPGA. What could that be useful for in the future? I really don't know. Again, you'd have to wait for that to get into developers' hands, but it is something that is on there and could be utilized, but I think the number one thing most people will just be bummed out about off the top talking about specs is the fact that it is still just a 1080p system, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but I know most people are hoping for 4K out of whatever board might become a Mr. 2. And again, I can't stress enough, just because the DE25 Nano exists does not mean we're going to actually be playing it as a Mr. FPGA 2, but again, stuff like PlayStation 2, you're talking probably about an FPGA chip, maybe four or 500,000 logic elements at the minimum, I would imagine, to actually be able to fit that in. And the other thing is, think about how long it would take someone to actually make that. It might not even be time possible. But this could mean things like more advanced 3D arcade boards. Maybe something like the Hyper Neo Geo 64 could fit within those 138,000 logic elements and dealing with all the RAM there and these speeds. This is something that could be a potential. But therein lies the second question is, outside of me being a huge Hyper Neo Geo 64 fan, would anyone else actually be interested in playing this compared to what we already have on Mr. FPGA? Because we are running out of systems to talk about here. Although honestly my dream and something I know wouldn't work on Mr. as it is now with the Jurassic DE10 Nano is something like the 3DO M2 arcade boards. This is something that could potentially come to a Mr. 2 or a DE25 Nano and I definitely have all the hardware to loan to any developer that I trust that wants to take this on. But you just have to kind of keep your expectations in check as to what a DE25 Nano or any other new device might be able to be capable of. More advanced 3D boards, maybe some 3D effects stuff, possibly. Possibly. But again, we just have to wait and see what actually happens when developers get their hands on any sort of successor board, whether it's the DE25 Nano or otherwise. Or maybe something like the Nintendo DS. I know Robert or FPJ ZoomSpots has said he'd love to make a core for the DS, but right now the memory bandwidth situation on the DE10 Nano that is the backbone of Mr. FPJ would just preclude that from actually working. And if you're wondering what the difference is between the DE10 Nano, DE10 Standard, or 25 Nano and Standard, for the most part they have the exact same parts on board. They may have some more connectors, but honestly here on the spec sheet, as far as the things that are important, they're going to be part across the board. So the question really is, is the Jurassic DE25 Nano potentially going to be looked at as a Mr. FPGA 2? I'm sure developers out there and project leads will look at it and see whether or not they think that would be a good place for the board to go because it is in a really strange situation. To try to get to the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox era, you would need to have something so massive on the logic side of things and so expensive that even if someone could make the core, you'd be talking about Ferrari-style pricing when you're trying to get to Honda Civic levels of affordability. Ability. Now, obviously, something like that wouldn't actually cost the price of a Ferrari, but the point is it's not just about raw power, it's about selecting a part that would actually be economical for most people to use, because nobody wants a Mr. 2 if it's going to be $1,500, $2,000. That would be a very niche item for a very select few people, so it really is a balancing act if there is going to be another board. It has to be powerful enough to actually make it a successor board, but it has to be economical enough so that most people can pick it up and not really worry too much about the pricing. 
Will you leave me a comment and you tell me down below how you feel about the 25 nano right now, knowing the specs and knowing what it is capable of and what it can't do, primarily being 4K, but it is a fun thought experiment because obviously we've gotten kind of end of life on consoles from Mr. FPJ and 64 Saturn and PlayStation 1, but we don't have economical hardware available yet that could do the next generation after that. Maybe a Dreamcast core could be potentially possible, we'd have to wait and see. But that's the news, I wanted to bring it to you guys as soon as I heard. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you have any questions or comments or need clarification, leave them down below. But we're done, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the holiday weekend, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.